Hi everyone, welcome to another episode. Now in today's episode, I want to talk about Tap Titans 2 Late Game Tactics. So I want to go through what that means and what difference from play style from early game to late game and what kind of things you can expect. <laughs> Now, if you're here new to this channel, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification channel. So whenever I release a new Tap Titans 2 guide or update, you'll be the first to know and help the channel out loads and I'll love you for it. So beginning, what do I mean by late game tactics? Now, if you have been playing for Tap Titans 2 for a while, uh, you've probably noticed Hopefully you've been following my guides and tips and tutorials and you've been able to breeze through the stages and you've reached about 70k, so 70,000 stages and above. Now, when you get to this stage, things start to slow down tremendously. So you, this is when you really get all the artifacts and all the enchantments. Now, currently there's 97 artifacts and uh, 22 enchantments. So once you've got, got all the artifacts and enchantments, uh, the only way to really like get a good power boost would be completing equipment sets like mythics and winning tournaments so top places to get loads of skill points to level up your build and stuff like that so you probably notice you you're like me um you'd be using the tactics where you level up your books of shadows in between tournaments then during tournament you're pushing and you can push two three four thousand stages at one time and then you hit this stage so 70k you know plus and you're going down to a few hundred so you, you where you used to maybe leveling 10,000 stages you know within a day or two you're then going down to leveling up to only 1,000 stages not even that sometimes the further you go on you might even just do a couple hundred now what do I mean by late game tactics when you get to this uh, this stage I mean I change the way I play slightly so there's a couple of tips and opinions that I recommend that you could try if it helps you. So if you feel that you've suddenly slowed down, um, that help you basically push more or push the best way you can. So I'm going to run through a bunch of them. And also you can feel free to join our Discord link above, uh, Discord server. All the pros hang out there. It's really friendly. And also if you've got any questions, jump in there. The people tend to answer it straight away. And it's a great place to uh, get some knowledge and stuff like that and make friends. So free to join us in there. Now, when I get to this stage, as I said, once your artifacts have been completed, artifacts are great sudden power, uh, sudden item to have to give you increase in power. So when it comes, when they're all being collected, any other thing would be tournaments and quests. There's a bunch of other things you can do, but I'm going to start with those two points first. So with equipment sets, the big ones you want to be completing is your mythics. Now, mythics take a lot to complete. So shards are the only way to complete these and they're very hard to get. The easiest way to get shards would be either from winning first place in tournaments and there's different tournament brackets but I think around about this stage should be around about 130 shards for first place. So getting first tournament is the big one. Sometimes you get titan chests which are on offer so you can get uh, double shards which give you 100 shards so it's good to save up diamonds for that. So I would recommend to use shards only to complete as many mythic sets as you can uh, try to complete, complete mythic sets that that are compatible to your current build for example if you're doing clan ship then do the warlord tree uh, mechanized sword fatal samurai uh, treasure hunter ancient warrior those kind of things uh, there is a wood link i will link down lemon llama's equipment guide on reddit that he he recommends the order to get equipment sets so we'll link that in the description below it's a very good guide so credit to lemon llama for supplying us with that thank you very much lemmy so i would recommend to try to get complete as many mythic sets as you can that's your priority so get in first place in tournaments getting those shards getting the mythic sets and the legendaries i wouldn't recommend using shards for the legendaries for now for two reasons getting um Diamonds at this stage is very easy. When you get first place, you get over a thousand diamonds. You, you you go through a lot of equipment when you're farming a lot. So collecting those of diamonds is really easy. So I would stockpile diamonds. And uh, whenever you sometimes when you get a new legendary item or uh, equipment drop, the the complete legendary set appears. So you, underneath your tournament icon or the event icon underneath here you have a complete legendary set for the cost of diamonds i would use the diamonds to complete legendary sets that way if you've got treasure hunter set 
um, mythic set, which I do recommend to get quite early, then your rates for dropping legendaries are quite high. So you do find you start getting loads of legendary drops anyway. For example, like I've got two there, um, two there, two there, uh, three there, and all of them are from drops. I haven't crafted any of them. All those items were from drop. And if you notice, most of my legendaries are starting to get complete because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to complete all the equipment sets to give me a, a must, as much power as I can. And by um, completing them, it increases your crafting power as well when you complete mythics and stuff like that. So it gives you crafting power uh, level increase, which also helps. But yeah, I'll try to use diamonds to complete legendary sets, shards to complete mythic sets. That takes care of the equipment side. Uh, yeah, and tournaments, getting first place in tournaments, that's also your big priority. You've probably been doing this already, going up to 70k. So doing the uh, tournament tips, uh, where you level up your books of shadows in between tournaments, and then in tournaments, you just push and level up to get first place. Uh, if you're not too familiar with it, if you're not too sure what the tactics are, I will link the top 10 tips, for, tournament tips video that I made in the description below and my icon it above as well. So worth watching that if you don't know about tournaments and tournament tips. So you begin first place being that way. Now, when you get even later stages, for example, you've got all your equipments and you've got all your legendary sets and everything and you slow down even more because that's been all used up. Once you've got all your equipment sets, legendary sets, everything, it is then the case of basically leveling up your artifacts as much as possible. Now on my main account, which is 90k plus, my late game tactics from that then change to leveling in and outside tournament. Basically, you basically level as much as you can. You find that uh, winning first place tournament is easy. You don't have to stockpile, you don't have to prep. Run about that stage, you just literally have to do two, maybe three runs and just push per normal and you should get first or second place quite easily. Um, it shouldn't be a problem by that stage. So then leveling in and out of tournament is fine. I normally just have the rule of thumb of one to three. So basically I put, uh, sorry, three to one. So basically I level up, uh, I go to my artifacts and I put all of it 100% max into my books of shadows. Um, make sure, I'm in tournaments of, that's why it's low, but normally before tournament it's over 50%. So I make sure it's at least minimum over 50%. Any high is great. So I put four marks into books of shadows and then for the next three runs, I put it to 5% and then I spread the cost between the artifacts or use the artifact optimizer to level it. And then after the third run, I'll put it all max back into Books of Shadows. So essentially, um, my Books of Shadows is always over 50%, apart from when I'm leveling up the artifacts of three runs, then going back to Books of Shadows. So it's a bit backwards and forwards. It's nearly 50-50, but one to three is not. So I'm putting a lot into, art um, not into artifacts. So I'll keep doing that backwards and forwards in and outside tournament. Obviously inside tournament, I, I, I prioritize leveling up artifacts more. So I might do, you know, as I said, like, three runs and if it's not first i might do some more runs but that's what i do tend to do a bit of both because uh, that so there's no it's really easy to win tournaments so that's one tactic uh, another thing to do is change build so when you get to this stage i tend to use the same build for a long time so i've been using clan ship build so even after nearly one well 1800 skill points uh, even at 70k, I'm still running a clan ship build. The reason being is because it's very good at pushing. It's stable. Yes, it's a bit active, but it's stable. Now I know. Now I know that if I was to change build, for example, if I change to heavy strike or shadow clone, it'd be less likely for me to do as well. The reason being is because I've spent months leveling up my artifacts towards clan ship. So when you change the build, you must spend some time. So it might take five runs, it might take 10 runs, but you need to re-level your artifacts to your new build. Because at the moment, most of my artifacts are towards clan ship, which means my heavenly, if I was to change to say, heavenly strike, it means my heavenly strike artifacts will be low level. It means anything that boosts heavenly strike would be low level. So if I was to change straight away and I haven't prepped or haven't prepared, then the new build will actually be weaker or worse off. So I might not even reach my current max stage. So you need to have some time to prep your artifacts towards your new build. You've also got to make sure your passive skills are quite high. So you've got good splash damage. Uh, also your mana regen. So you've got to make sure you've got good mana regen. And lastly, make sure your mythic sets, you've got the right one. So it's Angelic Guardian. Uh, sorry, go to mythics. 
So Angelic Guardian for Heavenly Strike and Ruthless Necromancer for Shadow Clone. Now you don't have to, you can still use those builds without that preparation, but trust me, if you stick with clanship, you can at least still get first place and have an easy run uh, until you ready prep into your new build. So when you do swap over, it's less hassle. For example, if I was to have uh, Ruthless Necromancer, I've got my passive skills, I've got nearly 2000 skill points. So if I was to swap now, it'd be I'd be very strong on my new build. I wouldn't have to prep that much and I wouldn't have to level up my artifacts that much onto the new build because I've got so much pre-prepped and pre-work done so that's the benefit of getting everything done beforehand it just means that when you change build you have a stronger uh, stronger start and uh, another tactic you can do is basically change your play style do you want to be active and push loads or do you want to farm loads so you can go the badge route you can go um, shadow claim where you just farm and load you don't gain stage as much but because you're farming loads it means that you can win more uh, basically do do more better in a badge event so you get better badges you get more rewards maybe you can level up uh, you farm your artifacts more and you can level up that way uh, or if you're very active you can be a heavy strike which would get you more stages quicker because you can push more but you have to actively play a lot more to do so so it depends on your play style uh, at this point when you get to 70 to I think a cap's 108,000 now. So it's, you know, so for 30 stages, it's gonna take you a, a couple months to do that. Uh, even if you're active, you've got to be really hard pushing, pushing, pushing. So anything you do, changing build, completing your mythic sets, and winning first place in tournaments, um, doing more raids, being more active in your raids so your passive skills go up. So clan raids, clan experience, everything, all those little things all add together to add more power and uh, basically bo uh, boost you. Uh, this is just my um, personal opinion and what I do when I get to a bit later stage. As I said, I do change my playstyle a little bit. So I was just wondering if you do the same when you got to 70k and you started to struggle. Uh, did, did you change the way you play? Did you change anything? Leave a comment below. And if this have, has helped you, um, sub would help a lot. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye.